Welcome. I welcome you all to this lecture in the course Introduction to Paninian Grammar. In the previous lecture, we studied the definition of karaka, then we also studied the definitions of six karakas. We also studied them in both the original sources, the text of Ashtadhyayi and also the post 18th century grammarians scheme which defined the six karakas in a unique way. We also looked at how both these descriptions match. We studied these descriptions in the diagrammatic form as well. Now, in today's lecture, we shall look at the sutras which are correlated with the technical terms karaka and these sutras are primarily the sutras which prescribe the vibhaktis. In this connection, let us take a recap. The definitions of six karakas given by Panini serve the purpose of chalking out the structure of the sentence meaning. This is part of the Arthakasha. The explanation of these definitions given in the post 18th century tradition takes it in the realm of cognition in accordance with the description of the process of speech production given in the Paniniya Shiksha which we have studied quite a lot in this course. It is important to study the way these meanings get expressed in the Shabdakasha and the actually audible speech signals as the output of this process of speech production. So in this lecture we shall be doing this task. The main concept that we are going to study today is Abhidhana. Abhidhana means expression. Expression of what? Expression of the Karaka in the Shabdakasha first and then in the actually audible speech signals next. So when a Karaka is expressed, it is said to be Abhihita or Ukta. As far as the Sanskrit terms are concerned, the words Abhihita and Ukta are used to denote a particular Karaka being expressed. And the general term is Abhidhana, meaning an expression of the Karaka. The correlation between a Karaka and the Abhidhana can be explained in the following way. So if the sentence structure is of the following type where there are three words, each has in itself a prakriti and pratyaya. So the left hand side of the plus sign within the bracket like this, this is the prakriti, this is the pratyaya, this is the first word. In the second word you have this left hand side prakriti and the right hand side a pratyaya. Similarly in the third word, the left hand side is the prakriti and the right hand side is the pratyaya. If this is the case and if this is the template of the sentence of Sanskrit, then the right hand side is pratyaya over here. This is the general one, still generic but little more specific. Now in order to express or denote karakas, the pratyayas are added to roots. This is the basic idea. This is the core idea. In this generic template where there are left hand sides and right hand sides mentioned over here by dashes, we fill in first of all the left hand side element which is not filled in 
in this particular slide for the sake of highlighting the fact that a pratyaya is added in order to express the karaka thereby linking the left hand side in one word with the left hand side of the other word in the sentence. This is the primary idea of the addition of the pratyaya to express or denote the karaka. The bottom line is that the karaka or the, the karaka or the roles played by entities in the accomplishment of an action, they are denoted always by pratyayas. This is the bottom line. I repeat, the karakas or the roles that entities play in the accomplishment of an action are expressed or denoted always by the pratyayas with some exceptions which we shall see later on. But generally the pratyayas express the karakas. So when we construct a sentence we once again begin with the generic template of this kind plus signs indicate the combination of the two elements prakriti and pratyaya. So to begin with we take a prakriti and let us say we follow the definition given by katyayana in the vartika namely ekating vakyam a sentence is that unit in which there is one thing. What it means is there is at least one prakriti which is a dhatu prakriti. Therefore now in this sentence of three words at least one is dhatu which is here. It can be anywhere here or here. Right now we place it over here. So this is dhatu. So this unit qualifies itself to be called a vakya because there is possibility that there is thing that comes over here which it comes later on as we show in the next step. So at least this is a dhatu and so this can be a pratipadika, this can be a pratipadika. So we take these, we start with the dhatu and then we take all these other entities and now we need the pratyayas over here to indicate the relation of this dhatu with these pratipadikas and the relation of these pratipadikas with the meaning of this dhatu. So we add pratyayas over here in this in these slots which are vacant over here in this stage we add pratyayas over here which indicate the correlation between the prakriti over here and the prakritis over here. So we add thing after dhatu and so now this slot gets filled so dhatu plus thing happens now so thing expresses the relation that this dhatu will have with the pratipadikas. So now we have sup plus sup added in the first two words whose prakriti is the pratipadika and we add thing to this third word whose prakriti is a dhatu. This is how abhidhana happens. So in order to express or denote the karakas or the roles that the entities which are expressed by these pratipadikas in the sentence. In the accomplishment of the action which is denoted by this verbal root dha in this sentence dhatu. So the pratyayas are now added to express these roles. So thing over here will express a particular role that these entities play. So the remaining roles will remain unexpressed and we shall see what happens then. But the point is that thing is added to a dhatu to express certain role, certain karaka that the pratipadikas and the meanings of the pratipadikas play in the accomplishment of the action denoted by the verbal root over here. Let us note down the process once again. First we go to the thing. The thing expresses or denotes either karta agent or karma object, but not both at the same time. First we go to the thing and why do we go to the thing? Because kriya is the vidhaya in the sentence, 
kriya is the most important element in the process of communication which makes the unit complete and makes it eligible to be called a sentence. So we go to the thing first and then we note that the thing expresses or denotes either karta agent or karma object as far as karakas are concerned but not both at the same time. So once if it is decided that thing expresses either karta or karma then we go to the sups which are part of the other padas in the sentence. And so then the remaining karakas they get expressed or denoted by these sups. This is the primary idea of the abhidhana. So the first abhidhana happens by the thing and in this threshold the remaining karakas remain unexpressed and so then in order to get them expressed you add sups after pratipadika. Both thing and sups they express the karakas, thing is taken first and taken as a threshold, it expresses one of the karakas and the remaining karakas now are unexpressed by the thing. So in order to express them you add sups after the pratipadikas. So after going to the thing and after having decided which karaka is abhihita, we go to the sups and the remaining karakas get expressed or denoted by these sups. So there is a sutra that we follow anabhitam karakam ekavarjam. So in this sentence leaving out one the remaining karaka is anabhita unexpressed for which we need sups to express it. So here are the explanations of the three constructions available in Sanskrit active voice, passive voice and also the impersonal construction. So what happens in the active voice and this we name as the first construction when thing expresses or denotes karta or agent we say that this is an active voice a very simple definition of active voice. When thing expresses or denotes karta or agent that is what is an active voice and in this active voice all other karakas then remain unexpressed. Now in order to express them sups are added after the pratipadikas and then the sentence becomes complete. This active voice is also known as kartru vachya in Sanskrit kartru vachya where karta is the meaning of thing. Here is an example Devadattah Prayagat Kashim Relayanena Devapujanaya Kartika Mase Gachati. One complete sentence. And we have provided the cases Devadattah Prayagat, this is fifth case, Kashim, second case, Relayanena, third case, Devapujanaya, fourth case, Gat Kartika Mase, seventh case and gachati the thing. The thing in gachati which is ti and devadattaha they both are shown in blue precisely to highlight the fact that the suffix ti in gachati which is a thing which is a verb which has a thing gacha is the dhatu ti is the pratyaya thing this thing expresses karta. In this sentence it is devadatta which is the karta intended by the speaker. So Devadatta and his role gets expressed by this thing. So all the roles that are played by Prayaga, the point of separation, Kashi, the Sanyoga, the Karma, Relayana, the Karana, Deva Pujana, the Sampradana, Kartika Masa, the Adhikarana, all these roles they remain unexpressed and in order to express them we will add the fifth sub triplet after Prayaga, second sub triplet after Kashi, third sub triplet after Relayana, fourth sub triplet after Deva Pujana, and seventh sub triplet after Kartika Masa. The Karaka, the role which was expressed by thing, namely the Karta, 
This role is played by Devadatta and because its role is already expressed by T now, you do not need another sup to express explicitly its role that it is playing in the accomplishment of the action of going. But nonetheless, we need to add the case ending in order to make this a pada. So, we add prathama over here and this prathama is closely linked with the karaka that is expressed by the thing. But we say that the prathama does not express any express any karaka. What does it express? We shall see later on. So, now this sentence is Devadattaha prayagat kashim rilayanena deva pujanaya kartika mase gachati which means Devadatta goes to Kashi from Prayaga by railway for worshipping deities in the month of Kartika. This is the sentence which has active voice construction. Kartru Vachya. Why? Because the which is the thing in the Kriyapada Gachati, the verb Gachati, this thing expresses Karta. And the karta over here intended by the speaker is Devadatta. So, Devadatta has prathama. So, this prathama and the thing, they are bound. They are closely associated. This is the active voice. So, because thing expresses karta in the active voice, karma object is expressed by the second triplet of the sub. Dvitiya. Karana is expressed by the third triplet of the subs, Trutiya. Sampradana, recipient is expressed by the fourth triplet of the subs, Chaturthi. Apadana, point of separation is expressed by the fifth triplet of the subs, Panchami. And Adhikarana, location or substratum is expressed or denoted by the seventh triplet of the subs, Saptami. This is what happens in the active voice. And this is what we saw in the sentence Devadattaha Prayagat Kashim Relayanena Devapujanaya Kartika Mase Gachati. The second scenario is that the thing expresses or denotes karma or object. So, this construction is called passive voice. In the passive voice, all other karakas remain unexpressed. Now, in order to express those unexpressed karakas, sups are added. This passive voice construction is also known as karma vachya, where the thing means karma. The thing denotes the role of karma. This is what is karma vachya or passive voice. Now, let us take the example, more or less the same example semantically, let us see how passive voice construction in Sanskrit takes place. The sentence is Devadattena Prayagat Kashi Relayanena Deva Pujanaya Kartika Mase Gamyate. I repeat. Now let us look at the passive voice construction, the second type of sentence construction in Sanskrit. When thing expresses or denotes karma or an object, this is called passive voice construction. Because karma is expressed by thing, all other karakas remain unexpressed. And now, in order to express them, subs are added after those respective pratipadikas. This construction is also known as karma vachya, where karma is the meaning of the thing suffix karma vachya. Here is an example. Devadattena prayagat kashi relayanena deva pujanaya kartika mase gamyate. Devadattena has got the third case here. This is the difference from the previous sentence. Prayagat has got the fifth case. Kashi, this is another difference. Earlier it had this second sub triplet dvitiya. Now it does not have anything. The first triplet will be added here. Relayanena is in the third sub triplet. Deva Pujanaya, same fourth sub triplet. Kartika Mase, same seventh sub triplet. And we have the verb Gamya Te. In this verb, Te, which is a thing, 
added after the verbal root gama meaning to go. This te is expressing karma which is kashi over here and that is why kashi is shown in blue colors which matches with this te. So, there is this binding between the first case and the thing. The remaining karakas are unexpressed. So, in order to express them we use these cases, we use these vibhaktis, these sups. So, the third sup triplet namely trutiya is used to express the kartru karaka, the kartru role played by Devadatta. Fifth panchami is used to express the apadana role played by Prayaga. Relayana is playing the role of Karana and in order to express it we use the third sub triplet which is Trutiya. Deva Poojana is playing the role of Sampradana and to express this role we use the fourth sub triplet namely Chaturthi. Kartika Masa is playing the role of Adhikarana in order to express which we use the sub triplet seventh that is Saptami and in this way the sentence construction happens. The sentence meaning is Kashi be, is being reached by Devadatta from Prayaga by railway for worshipping deities in the month of Kartika. So, the roles of Devadatta, Prayaga, Kashi, Relayana, Deva Poojana and Kartika Masa in the accomplishment of the action of going remain same across both voices. Devadatta remains Karta, Prayaga remains Apadana, Kashi remains Karma, Relayana is Karana, Deva Pujana is Sampradana and Kartika Masa is the Adhikarana. The difference in both these voices is that in Gamyate the role played by Kashi namely the Karma is expressed by Te and therefore now Kashi is having the first sub triplet namely Prathama and the roles played by all others they remain unexpressed by Ting therefore now we add subs after it. Previously Gachati was the verb in which Ti expressed the role of Karta, Devadatta is the Karta. So, Devadatta's role gets expressed by Ti Ting therefore Devadatta will have Prathama and other Karakas their roles are unexpressed by the thing therefore they will get the sups to express those respective karaka roles. This is the difference between the active voice and the passive voice in Sanskrit also called as kartruvacha active voice and karmavacha passive voice. So, in the passive voice because karma is expressed by the thing te here karta agent remains unexpressed and so it is expressed or denoted by the third triplet of the subs namely trutiya. Karana instrument is expressed by the third triplet of the subs trutiya once again. Sampradana recipient is expressed denoted by fourth triplet of the subs namely chaturthi. Apadana the point of separation is expressed or denoted by the fifth triplet of the subs namely Panchami and Adhikarana location or substratum is expressed or denoted by the seventh triplet of the subs Saptami. This is the expl explanation of the passive voice. Let us look at the third voice which is impersonal voice. In this case thing expresses or denotes bhava or state, state of action and then this voice is called impersonal voice. All karakas, all six karakas remain unexpressed. In fact, there is no possibility of the karma karaka here. So, all five karakas remain unexpressed. Now, in order to express them, sups are added. This particular voice is also known as bhava vachya. Here is an example. Devadattena Kashyam Deva Poojanaya Kartika Masi Sthiyate Devadattena in the third case Kashyam seventh case Deva Poojanaya fourth case Kartika Masi seventh case Sthiyate is the verb. 
in this case now you do not have any corresponding bound word with the thing because thing expresses only the state of an action. Because thing expresses state all the karakas they remain unexpressed. Devadatta is the karta, Kashi is the substratum or the location, Deva Poojana is the sampradana, Kartika Masa is also the location or substratum and Sthiyate has got Tha remains or stays as an action and Te indicates the state. So what this sentence means is that Devadatta stays in Kashi for worshipping deities in the month of Kartika. Kashi is act playing the role of the Adhikarana which is a spatial Adhikarana and Kartika Masa is playing the role of temporal Adhikarana. So, but both are the Kartradhikaranas because Devadatta is residing in Kashi and Devadatta is residing in Kashi in the month of Kartika month. Kartika Masa. So, now we have all the Karakas being expressed in the respective cases. So, Karta is expressed in the third by the third triplet of the Sups namely Trutiya. Karana is also expressed in the third sub triplet. Sampradana is expressed by the fourth triplet of the Sups. Apadana point of separation is expressed by the fifth triplet of the subs and adhikarana location of substratum is expressed by the seventh triplet of the supratyayas. This is how the voices are explained in Sanskrit. The active voice or katruvacha, passive voice or karmavacha and impersonal voice or bhavavacha. Now the next question is what happens to the abhihita karaka or expressed karaka? the karaka that is expressed. We have seen that there are three types of constructions that are possible in Sanskrit, kartruvacha, karmavacha and bhavavacha. And in all these we noted that kartruvacha means when the thing expresses or denotes karta and then remaining karakas remain unexpressed. In order to express these unexpressed karakas, we use sups and then we listed down the numbers of the sup triplets to express a particular karaka. Similarly, in the karma vachya, we noted that the thing expresses the karaka karma, so remaining all karakas remain unexpressed and now we use specific sub triplets to express those unexpressed karakas. And in bhavavacha when the thing expresses bhava all karakas they remain unexpressed and we use the subs to express those unexpressed karakas. Now what happens to the karaka that is abhihita or expressed that is a very pertinent question in this regard. Let us try to figure out using the traditional sources the answer to this question. So the entity whose role, whose karaka gets expressed by thing does not require any other word to express its role once again. And so this Pratipadika is added the first triplet of sup namely Prathama after it and this prathama and the thing they can be said to be correlated or can be said to be bound in this particular sense. So we do not need a, to add a sup to a pratipadika whose role is already expressed by the thing but we have to add a sup to a pratipadika in order to make it a pada fit to be used in a sentence and that sup is Prathama. This is what happens to the Abhihita Karaka. If we look at the examples that we have seen, Devadattaha, Prayagat, 
कार्तिकमासे काशीं गच्छति सो गच्छति इज द वर्ब विच हैज अ थिंग विच एक्सप्रेसेस करता सो देवदत्त प्लेइंग द रोल ऑफ करता एंड द रोल ऑफ देवदत्त इज ऑलरेडी एक्सप्रेस बाय थिंग एंड सो नाउ वी डोंट नीड एनी वर्ड टू एक्सप्रेस द रोल ऑफ देवदत्त बट वी ऐड प्रथमा आफ्टर इट टू गिव इट द स्टेटस ऑफ पद दिस इज वॉट हैपन्स टू द अभिहित कारक वी इट इन कर्तृवाच्य और वी इट इन कर्मवाच्य प्रथमा इज एडेड टू दैट प्रातिपदिक हुज रोल इन रिलेशन विद द एक्शन डिनोटेड बाय द वर्बल रूट इज ऑलरेडी एक्सप्रेस बाय द थिंग दैट इज एडेड आफ्टर दैट वर्बल रूट सो टू समराइज द कारक थियरी explains the interrelation of action and entities the roles played or thought to be played by the entities in the accomplishment of the action these are karakas they form the basis of sentence meaning construction and the suffixes which express them form the basis of the sentence two constructions namely active and passive voice are based on them active voice can be summarized in the numbers 1 2 and passive voice construction can be summarized in the numbers 3 1 what 1 2 and 3 1 indicate is the following one indicates the vibhakti of the kartru karaka which is the prathama first vibhakti and two indicates the dvitiya vibhakti in which the karma karaka is expressed in the passive voice the kartru karaka is expressed by the third case tritiya vibhakti therefore three and karma karaka gets expressed by the first vibhakti namely prathama actually in both these constructions the prathama vibhakti is not expressing any karaka the thing is expressing that karaka and prathama vibhakti is used to be added after that pratipadika whose role is expressed by the thing vibhakti nonetheless active voice can be described as 1 2 12 passive voice can be described as 31 3 1 before closing let us recite the mangala charana as is our practice this is taken from mahabhashya pradeepa vivaranam by annam bhatt and it reads like this mahabhashya pradeepasya कृत्स्नस्योद्योतनम मया क्रियते पदवाक्यार्थ तात्पर्यस्य विवेचनात आई रिपीट महाभाष्य प्रदीपस्य कृत्स्नस्योद्योतनम मया क्रियते पदवाक्यार्थ तात्पर्यस्य विवेचनात एंड द फाइव सूत्रस दे आर टेकन फ्रॉम 7 1 7th चैप्टर फर्स्ट सब चैप्टर 7th अध्याय फर्स्ट पाद एंड दे आर the following yuvoranakau aya neyi niyaya phadakachakham pratyayadinam jhontah adabhyastat and atmane padeshvanatah i repeat yuvoranakau aya neyi niyaya phadakachakham pratyayadinam jhontah adabhyastat and atmane padeshvanatah Thank you for your attention.